I would ask you the difference between a hamburger, a steak, a hamburger with fries, a griddle, a restaurant, or a drive-in restaurant, would you be able to give me a definition of any of those terms? I'm guessing you do a pretty good job. Now, all these terms are probably pretty familiar to you. One of the problems we have in my profession, too often we have terms that we think are very familiar, very common, and assume all of our clients understand exactly what they are. But I'm finding out more and more that people confuse some of these terms and don't really know where they fit. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. So it's pretty common for a client to tell me that they have an IRA at a bank when they actually mean a CD, or a CD at the bank when they actually mean an annuity, or a CD when they actually mean an IRA. So I'm going to break these terms down, maybe give you a better understanding of what they mean and how they fit. You know, two basic ways to look at where your money's going would be how it would be invested and also how it's taxed. We're talking about two separate things. So how it's invested, that money could be in cash, it could be in CDs, stocks, bonds, mutual funds. It could be in precious metals or real estate or an annuity. As far as how it's taxed, for example, it could be in a taxable account, an IRA, a Roth IRA, or a qualified or non-qualified annuity. You're seeing there's a little bit of overlap here with the term annuity, and I'll explain that in just a minute. So first, let's talk about how something's invested. I explained the list before. Most of these you're familiar with. The confusion tends to be around terms like CD or certificate of deposit and annuity. That's where I'm getting the most confusion. A CD is, in simple terms, a promise from a bank to pay you a certain rate over a period of time. Let's say you get a one-year CD for 4%. You put your money in, one year later you get your money out with a 4% return. Whether that return is taxable or not depends on how you set it up. An annuity could be this, uh, the money that goes in before tax, so an IRA type of vehicle, or it could be money that's already been taxed and then the money in an annuity, by definition, would continue to grow tax deferred. Let's look at a couple of charts to show you what I'm talking about so maybe you can compare these concepts. A quick overview on these categories for how things are taxed. For investments that go in pre-tax, an IRA, yes. A qualified annuity, yes. The others, no. For growing tax deferred, once the money's in there, that would apply to an IRA, a Roth IRA, a qualified annuity, and a non-qualified annuity. For money that's taxable upon withdrawal, for a taxable account, some of it might be taxable. You might be paying tax along the way. You may pay more tax or gains when you take it out. An IRA would be fully taxable as income when you take it out. Roth IRA, no, as long as you played by the rules. A qualified annuity, the entire thing would be taxable upon taking it out. It grows and is invested like an IRA. And a non-qualified annuity, that would be money that would put you put in taxable income after tax income. As you take it out, you'd be taxed on the earnings on that annuity. To sum it up, I know these terms can be confusing. A lot of terms in my world are confusing. Maybe this chart will give you a little bit of clarity. Please do your research or work with a financial professional before you make any decisions about investing. But understand that what you're looking at, one would be how you want to invest the money, and two, how it will be taxed along the way or when you take it out. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Please keep in mind that this was a general overview. I did not touch on every type of investment, and I certainly didn't talk about all the features of an annuity. Again, you need to do your homework or work with a financial professional before you do any kind of investing. That would be my recommendation. Thank you again.